In this video, we'll be integrating the Google Places API into our Boxdot application. Hey guys, and welcome back to the latest episode of Boxdot. We will take the Google Places API and build that into our Boxdot application. To start off with this implementation, we have to first get an API key from Google Places. To do that, you can open up the Google Cloud platform, which is cloud.google.com. Then you can open up your console and when you're in the console you can click on the top left corner for the drop down and click on the new project now i've already done this so i won't be doing that now then enter the details for your project and you'll end up on your projects dashboard when you get to this point we can open up the hamburger menu and go to the api and services then you can click on the enable APIs and services in the top left. Click on the Google Places API and then click on the enable button if it's not enabled. When that is complete, you can head back to the APIs and services and then you can click on the credentials tab. Then at the top, you can create new credentials. Click on API key and then you'll have a new API key that is created. So now that we have our API key, we can actually build our functionality. If you want to follow along, I'm using the master branch in the github.com forward slash full stacks forward slash boxed out repo. We'll start off by adding our places service package. Once we have the places service, what we have to do is to initialize it with our API key. We'll do that in the startup view model. Before we can do that, we have to register our service with our locator. So open up app dot dot and as a dependency, we'll add a new lazy singleton and we'll pass it the places service. My autocomplete sometimes doesn't work, so I'll just type in the full package name. Now that we've added that, we can rebuild our code. And when that is complete, we have our service injected into our locator. Now we can go back to the startup view model. And then we'll get the places service from our locator. Then as the first thing in our startup logic, we can call initialize on our places service and pass it the API key. As I've mentioned, I'm going to put this key in here. I'm going to remove it by the time the video is out. And then I'll put the actual real key in an environment file that we will read. That's all we need for the Google places setup. It open up the address selection view. For this functionality, we'll use the built-in form generating from stacked. So we'll start off by defining this view as a form view. For the fields, we'll only have one field and that will be the form text field called address. I'm going to run the build runner so that I can get the controller associated with that text field. Now that we have that, I will extend my address selection mixin, which will contain all of the form things that I want. In the on model ready function, I want to start listening for my form updates. Then we can go to the address selection view model and change that into a form view model. This requires us to override a function called set form status. This function is called whenever one of the controllers changes a value. So this is where you would do validation or anything, but we'll use this function to fire off our autocomplete fetch. To do the autocomplete fetch, we'll first get our places service. We are going to be using a function called get autocomplete. This function returns a list of places autocomplete results. This is a model that belongs in the places service that has all of the autocomplete information on it. Now, since we know that, we are going to create a list of places autocomplete results called autocomplete results. This will be a private variable and we will return it through a public getter with the same name. Then we'll want to have a boolean that checks if the value is empty or not. And this will be used in the UI when we start doing our implementation. To start the implementation, we will create a future that will fetch our autocomplete results and store that in the autocomplete results value. We'll create a future called get autocomplete results. Then we'll start by checking if the address value is not equal to null. If you're concerned about where this value is coming from, please watch the video that I will link in the top right corner about the stacked forms generating. We're going to details about what we generate for you and the values that you have available 
within your view model. This value actually comes from the generated address selection view dot form dot dot file. If that value is not null, we want to get the autocomplete results from the places service and store it in a value called places results. If the places results is not equal to null, we want to set that equal to the autocomplete results. And once we've set that, we want to notify the listeners so that we can rebuild the UI. That is all the functionality we need to get autocomplete into our code base. We'll call the autocomplete results function every time a value changes. Now that we have our functionality, we can go to the address selection view. For the body of the scaffold, we'll just use a simple list view because I'd like to add the autocomplete results just in a list below our text field. The first child in this list view will be a text form field. We'll give it an input declaration simply to show the hint text, enter your address. And for the controller, we'll pass it in the address controller. That will link up our controller with the view model and everything will be synced all the time. Next up, we'll check if we have no autocomplete results. And if that's the case, we'll add a text widget that says we have no suggestions for you. And for the last piece of UI, we will check if we do have autocomplete results. And if that's the case, we will index into the autocomplete results and map them. And we'll simply render out a list tile. The title will be text that shows the main text from the autocomplete result. And the subtitle will be text that shows the secondary text from the autocomplete result. That is literally all we need for Google Places integration. I'm going to just open up the emulator and I will run that so that we can see how this looks. We can go ahead and run the code that we just built. When we log into the app, we know that in the previous episode, we built the logic to take you to the address selection if the user doesn't have an address. So that's how we ended up on the address selection view. If I click on the enter your address and I type in six, not Dom, you can see that autocomplete works and it's working perfectly fine. And that is basically everything you would need for places integration. The last thing I want to do is make sure that I won't publish any of my API keys to the GitHub repo. So we're going to create a new file called dot inf that looks like this. Inside we'll have a value called Google Maps API key. I'll go to the startup view model where we're using our key. I'll cut that out and paste it in the end file. Then we're going to add the package that actually uses this file. It's called flutter underscore dot inf. And the last thing we also have to do in the pubspec file is to add the dot inf file to our assets list. Now in the startup view model where we have removed our API key, we can index into the env value and we can get the Google Maps API key out of it. And the last thing you have to do is go to your main file and then load the .env file using the load function from the .env package. With all that said, I will see you guys next week. Please share this video if you found it useful. Please comment below. I'll reply to all of your comments because I enjoy talking and helping people. That's exactly why I have this YouTube channel. Thanks again and see you next week. Bye-bye.